What's up everybody? I've been staring at my Steam list for the last couple of days trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do for another series. I've got a ton of point and click adventure games. Some of them are ancient, some of them are more recent. But then I started to think, well, you know, I haven't really hit the uh, Telltale Games catalog. I've played The Wolf Among Us, which I hope some of you guys have seen. If you haven't, uh, be sure to look it up on my channel. It's pretty cool. But I've not played The Walking Dead. I know, I know. Don't, don't yell at me. Don't judge me. And I have not played Back to the Future, which is one of the games that I've always wanted to play, but just have never really found the time or whatnot to do it. So I thought, well, if I'm going to play it, I may as well record it because you guys may enjoy it too. So here we go. Would you like to see notifications and Marty has a new goal? Sure, why not? We're in it for the story, right? All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 AM. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, I need... Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's <laughs> it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right, check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. So cool. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Nice. <laughs> watch this, watch this. He disintegrated Einstein. <laughs> what did I tell you? 88 miles per hour! The temporal displacement occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Nice. Hot Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Doc. He disintegrated Einstein. Calm down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? <laughs> the appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, is so Einstein cool. has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Kind of a DeLorean? Nice. The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flush dispersal. Look out! I like how they redid the part of the movie like this. That's awesome. Uh, Doc? Huh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Okay. I think we finally get some control here. Yep, there we go. Get Doc's notebook. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> he kind of walks around like a dope. Sealed container, toolbox. Notebook, notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. 
is mass equals i times z and e equals the square root of z times c squared hmm. and the flux dispersal rate is say this isn't the way it happened because this isn't that uh, something's way off here Is everything okay? Love the weird science. Yeah, mom. And I, it was it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. Nice. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap! I'm late. I do very much like how they've made enough connections and things to the movies. And this is really slick. Episode 1. It's about time. Okay, this is neat. This is really neat. Too late to stop the sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to. Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell bent on using his land for that new parking garage. And hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty! Nice. <laughs> Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... ...remembering. Alright, make sure Doc didn't leave anything dangerous lying around. Dog feeder? Hey, let me- Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. Sorry, Marty. Yeah, go away, Biff. I wonder why Doc didn't take any of these with him. What else are we looking for here? Some dog feeder, television. May as well just click everything. Contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can intervene to prevent your own conception, for example. A fish tank down here. A fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's a... fish had weird taste and decor. I kind of like Doc. I don't think there's actually any fish in there any longer. I miss Einstein. 
I'd better stick around. Doc might have left something important behind, and he wouldn't want it to end up at Biff's place. Good call. So let's go. Uh, I don't think we can go that way. We can go this way. That's George. Hey, McFly. Let's take a look at the model. Doc built this model at downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Um. Can I see that model courthouse for just a second? I need to get something out of it. Like what? A not guilty verdict? Har har har. That was a joke. Oh, yeah, not funny. I, but really, can I? No, I think I'll hold on to it. Can I kick him in the Give face? Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your <laughs> business. Doc asked me to- Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Okay, if you need help getting Doc's notebook back from Biff, click the hints button. Well, I'm going to try not to do that. Seems kind of empty without the courthouse. Okay, jukebox. Hey, let me try, Marty. Can now, I kill Biff, him? Seriously. let Marty have his turn. You got it, Mr. McFly. Can I play this now? Nope, he just pops right back in here. Enough. All right. Now, Biff. Sorry, Marty. All right. Well, we can't do that, so we have to do something else to mess with him. Kind of curious. Okay. Do do do. Hey, Dad. It's all becoming clear Why now. Why my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Uh huh. Uh huh. Inventory looks cool. Doo, doo, doo. This and this. No. Here's an oldie. What a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look. It's Chuck Butthead. Hit it. Come on, do it. Let me show you how it's done. Now, Biff. I think that's uh. Marty's guitar. Oh, gosh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Here you go, Marty. Let's hear a few licks. Wow, that was sizzling hot. Like a melting ice cube. What an ass. Let's make some noise. There we go. <laughs> That'll work. And we'll do this. And now, something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. Biff, I thought I told you not to take my son's guitar. Oh, right. Sure thing, Mr. McFly. I was just warming him up for you, Marty. Let's see what you got. It's still an ass. Huh. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. Must have done something wrong. Now that is a dangerous amp. Now that nope. is a dangerous amp. Okay, I need to get... Well, let's see hey, what's Dad. going on here. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! <laughs> I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know- Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, 
but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. That's not Doc. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That, that's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. About Biff, Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, son. I'll stay out of your way. You know where to find me. Alright. Now that that's over with, can we just get out of the dialogue? I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Alright. Now that the dad may not interfere, let's try this. You want to hear a number by Biff and the Biff Tones? Always happy to play for my adoring fans. Do it. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. <laughs> Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. <laughs> cool. Ah, Doc, where are you? Well, that works. It's gonna be the dog. Or like Doc would have gotten out of him and like, Marty! Ah. <laughs> yep! Einstein! Hi there. Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? There's a shoe down here. Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Tape recorder. Marty? Ah! Marty, if you're hearing this recording, then the DeLorean's automatic retrieval feature is a resounding success. Automatic retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I programmed the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now. Or then. Or, uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you come to my rescue in the past. Or oh, was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you going to tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading mark Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right. Last Time Departed. Last Time Departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on. Come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? Hmm. Now we need to figure it out. Got anything cool in our inventory? How about this? This notebook has all of Doc's plans for the flux capacitor and the DeLorean. I'd better make sure it never falls into the wrong hands. And by wrong hands, I mostly mean Biff. So can I open it? After all the trouble I went through getting this thing, there's no way I'm letting it out of my sight. Um... Looks like the time circuits still work. Now I only need to know when to look for Doc. Is there anything else in here that's a clue? 
Hey dog, you got anything on you? That would make sense, right? Yeah, I understand. How you doing, buddy? What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? That's helpful. Um, hey, tell me about the shoe. What do you know about this shoe, Einie? Great Scott! I think he's onto something! Nice touch. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? Shoe's gonna belong to somebody in this apartment. Willing to bet it's the only one that's lit up. Step away from the door! Ah. Now, let me get a look at you. You're a Einstein, come on! Just as I suspected. <laughs> hooligans! Get along now! Scat! I'm no hooligan. I'm not a hooligan, ma'am. I'm a, a teenager. I wasn't born yesterday, young man. Aren't you the miscreant who skateboards through the town square every morning between 8 and 8.30 in a decidedly unpunctual manner? Uh, yeah? All skateboarders are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Well, okay then. And all old ladies are bitches. State your business, child. You're making me miss Merv. Well... See, that's the thing. I'm not sure why I'm here. Einstein here brought me, and... Well? <sighs> State your business, okay, child. So, well? Uh, who are you? E. Strickland. You aren't related to, uh, Vice Principal Strickland, are you, ma'am? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm his sister, Edna. There's the slacker. Oh, and you're one of those McFly slackers, aren't you? Yes, uh, what's old man Strick? I mean, what else has your brother been saying about me? Nothing I couldn't have deduced for myself, slacker. <laughs> Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. Uh, okay. Sure, why not? Here, wanna see a shoe? Can I throw it at your head? A shoe? Wow, now, now what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> Stay there! I guess she realized that she's missing a shoe. <laughs> well, I guess we're going in. Leave that creature outside! Aww. Sorry, Einstein. Poor dog. Well, took you long enough. Gee. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Mm, much better. So neat and orderly. Nah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. <laughs> it's a fact. Look it up. Can I start snooping around your place? Uh... Have a seat, Sonny. Sure, why not? Where exactly? Hey! You kids! Put out those cigarettes! <laughs> oh, man. What do we got here? Don't touch those! My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. Jam. Right. 
So I guess I can't mess with the papers. Can I take the binoculars? Mind if I take a look? Go ahead, dear. Man, these are powerful. I could see Biff going into the video store. Yeah, he wouldn't believe the filth that boy watches. Yeah, he's nothing but an out-of-control hedonist. Just like his father. If there's a clue to find a doc out there, I'm not seeing it. I don't even know where to start looking. The newspapers, probably. I guess we gotta talk uh, to her. Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! <laughs> yes? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Huh. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But. No one likes bitchy oh, old fine. women. Either. Let me think about it. Uh. Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes. The day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Hmm. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... <laughs> no, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe things about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. Uh -huh. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. So one year less than, there's probably a build plaque on it. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. Okay. I guess somewhere in these Order. stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Sure, but that doesn't help. Doing some stargazing? No, I set my sights on the lower things. Is that... Chip, Chip! Well, okay. I don't think I can... Don't let me keep you from your business. I don't think there's any other options to talk with her. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground! Oh, man, lady. Okay. Must be something I can do here. Uh, what she got here? Candy! I like candy. Oh, that candy looks older than I am. Yeah, okay. Maybe I don't like that candy. Hold on, radiator. Man, she keeps it hot in here. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. Then don't touch anything. Nice. 
So this means I can steal her binoculars. I don't think I can steal them, but I can use them to probably look at the video store and get the year. Then try and talk her into... Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Nineteen thirty-two, so it would have been nineteen thirty-one that the thing burned down. Because she said Rebuilt it was in February nineteen thirty-two. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. Har har har, lady. All right. Excuse me, Miss Strickland. I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speaking. Yeah, it's just gonna be the same thing. Don't let me keep. Okay. What we know now. I told you not to touch those. But I really need to look them up. So now I'm gonna hit this. I'm gonna make her leave again. Then I'm gonna touch There's the paper. There's the whistle. Surely the water's boiling by now. Oh, I bet it is. Stay in there, would you? Let's see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. <laughs> my new papers! Sorry, Sorry Mr. Strickland. Go. Uh, let me... No! You've gotten my history out of order! Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Okay, bye. Help! Police! Crazy old lady. Jeez. Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? Uh, I'm dressed up for a Halloween party. It's a work uniform. It's a costume. Uh, tonight's the big uh, Halloween party. Halloween party? In May? Oops. Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing. Sir, right? yes sir. I hope so. <laughs> hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. Come on, Einstein. Ready to go, Einstein? Okay, time circuits. Time circuits? On. On. <laughs> flux capacitor. Uh, fluxy. Alright. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Come on. That didn't seem like it worked. inconvenient.
time to hide the car.